I need to, so before I start, I need to apologize for the people who have attended to my previous talk around two years ago. So, so after the, the talk two years ago, I found a small error in my paper and it had, the error has been fixed now. So the content, the theorem in this talk will be different from what we have, what we, I have talked uh, two years ago. Some of the theorems has, has been modified. Okay, so let's start. Um, so today I will talk about the uh, HKR isomorphism and the whole show the cohomology. So first uh, for smooth, uh, smooth schemes, then we will talk about uh, move on to the OB for the case. Okay, so let's start. Uh, the whole show the cohomology is defined as the X, X the algebra. So this has many applications in deformation theory and uh, so on. Uh, and uh, so, in, in so uh, if you start with an algebra A, uh, we res we need to when in order to compute this X the algebra, we need to resolve the A as a uh, A tensor A op module. So this is the standard bar resolution, bar complex. You plug the bar complex into the uh, uh, home, then you compute the X algebra. This is the classical definition. And this can be generalized to the variety case. You use the same definition. So A turns A op becomes X cross X. And the delta is the diagonal embedding. So, the HKR isomorphism. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. So the HKR isomorphism says that uh, you can uh, write the whole show the homology and the cohomology explicitly in terms of uh, in terms of the well, well, this is the whole number in some in some sense, and this is called the polyvector field. Well, why we care about it, the why we care about the whole show the homology and the cohomology? Well, that's because they have some uh, applications in deformation theory and uh, in homological mirror symmetry. Uh, you, as you can see, this thing looks like the whole decomposition. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, the following motivation is uh, the following observation is the main motivation for my talk. So. Notice that there are natural ring structures on both sides, on both sides of the HKR isomorphism. So on the X algebra, you have a natural uh, algebra structure given by a composition of morphisms in, in the derived category. And on the polyvector field, you have a natural product. This is given by the wedge product. However, the HKR is not a ring isomorphism. It does not preserve the product. Uh, so this is the theorem. This is a theorem claimed by Kosevich and proved by Clark and Vandenberg. So you can add some correction terms to the HKR isomorphism, then you get an isomorphism of rings. So one of the motivation for me to study the OB for the whole show the cohomology is that I want to generalize the theorem to OB for. Okay, so before we move on to the OB for case, I want to mention that there is an interesting theorem. It's very similar to the previous theorem. So if you have a Lie algebra G, then you can consider the symmetric algebra. Symmetric algebra is just the, the polynomial ring and the universal enveloping algebra. And there is a map from the symmetric algebra to the universal enveloping algebra. So you, uh, you just, it's the anti-symmetric map. Uh, so you just uh, map x1 to, uh, times x n to the, to all the permutations. Sigma is the group in the, in the symmetric, it is an element in the symmetric group. This is the PPW map. 
So the PBW map he uses the map uh, from a cohomology, but it's not a ring as much. Uh, once you add a correction term to the PBW map, you get a S more of algebra. This is Duflo's theorem. So first, I want to explain the Lee theoretical interpretation of the previous the uh, theorem for Obihold. So this thing has a Lee theoretic background. This is the first thing uh, that I want to explain. And second, I want to talk about the, the talk about the generalization of the theorem to all people. Okay, so let's recall in the classical Lie setting, in the classical Lie setting, we can talk about Lie groups and uh, its tangent sp space, which is a Lie algebra. And we can consider the exponential maps, uh, the exponential map from the, uh, the Lie algebra to the group. Moreover, if you have a group homomorphism, F, then you can compute the uh, the induced map on tangent space. Then you put the exponential map here. Uh, the diagram is commutative. And in the case of algebraic geometry, so so what is the so in the in the story of Hausdorff cohomology, what is the, the group? What is the group in this case? And what are, what is the Lie algebra? So first, let me tell you the, the group object is the is this, and uh, I need to spend ten minutes in explaining this this thing. So so the the point is that this this scheme controls the controls the uh, whole shoulder homolo homology and the cohomology. You can get everything about the whole shoulder homology and the cohomology from this scheme. Uh, and what it is. So be, uh, before we look at the R, so we ignore the R first. This is just the fiber product X cross X in X cross X. This is a fiber product. And R means derived. We want to take the derived fiber product. And what derived means? Well, so in general, if you have a scheme X and Y and S, and you want to take the fiber product. Uh, that just means, uh, in terms of structure shift, you want to you want to consider this tensor product, right? Uh, because every uh, because the construction is alpha over s, so you just need to consider this this tensor product. And the derived uh, derived tensor product just means that you want to make this uh, derived fiber product just means you want to uh, replace the tensor product by the derived tensor product. And this means that you need to resolve X as a free uh, OS algebra. So, so just re resolve uh, o x o x as a free o s algebra. Then then you get a chain complex, and uh, plug the chain complex into the tensor product. Product. This is what it means. And the corresponding corresponding uh, uh, Lie algebra is the is the shifted tangent bundle. Again, it is a chain complex, but you put the Tangent bundle in the degree one piece, not in the degree zero piece. And uh, there are two ways to think about the tangent bundle. Uh, no, there are two, in general, if you have a vector bundle over X, there are two ways to think about it. One is to say that it is a locally free shift over X. The other way is that uh, you say that it is a scheme over X such that each fiber is a vector space. So, so when I consider the shifted tangent space as a scheme over X, this is what I mean. So if you think about it, if you think about it in terms of the structural complex, you just take the dual of the vector bundle and take the symmetric algebra on that. This is what I mean. 
Oh, and I want to mention that since all the derived schemes are affine over X, so it is determined by its structural complex. So if this is a little bit abstract for you, you just need to think about it in terms of structural complex. It's just a shift of D, uh, CDJ over X. Okay, and uh, why this is a group? Well, the motivation comes from the comes from topology. So, in the next page, uh, X is a topological space. Uh, and maybe let's assume it is a connected manifold, and we can we can compute the similar thing in the in the category of topological spaces. And this is known as the free loop space. So. This is the motivation why this uh, derived fiber product has a group structure. Okay, so the next page, X is a, X is a topological space. And we want to compute the same thing, but uh, again, there is a funny notation H. This means homotopy fiber product. So it's not the naive uh, fiber product. Before we take the fiber product, we need to resolve the diagonal map by a fabrication. Well, this is because uh, in topology, uh, an arbitrary map it does not behave well. We want to replace the map by a fabrication such that the fabri fabrication is homotopic to the original map. It's like in the homological algebra, you want to replace every module by a free module resolution, something like that. Okay, so first we replace the diagonal in, so to compute the homotopy fiber product, first we replace the diagonal embedding by a fabrication. And this is the fabrication. So let me draw the, that, let me draw the picture. So the diagonal, diagonal is X and the plane is X cross X. So what is Px? Px is all the paths that start from x and end at any, any place you like. Px is the path space. And it's clear that uh, Px is a homotopy, equivalent to, a homotopy equivalent to x, since you can contract all the path. So now to compute this homotopy fiber product, just to replace, uh, x by px, plug it in, and then do the naive uh, fiber product. And you can see what you got. We'll just use the definition to compute the fiber product. Uh, just use the definition to compute it. You will get all the path uh, that start from x and the end at x. So you get something like this. Uh, the diagonal is x. And why this is a group? Well, in the following, I will show that this is hom uh, this is homotopy equivalent. This is homotopy equivalent to the free loop space on x. So why is that? Uh, in this case, we have uh, we have two projection maps onto the first factor and onto the second factor. So if you have a uh, path alpha here, if you have alpha here, then you can project it down to the, to the first factor. You can also project it down to the second factor. And uh, notice that you can compose the two. So alpha inverse can be composed with alpha two. Alpha one inverse can be composed with alpha two. Oh, and this is gamma, so sorry. So for any element, for any path, you map it to alpha one inverse composed with alpha two, you get a loop. This is a loop in X. So this defines a map from the homotopy fiber product so this defines a map from the homotopy fiber product to the free loop space on X. And it turns out that this is a, 
or homotopy equivalence. Okay. So yeah. So finally, the the answer is that uh, this homotopy fiber product is as is homotopy equivalent to the free loop space over X, and uh, of course the free loop space is a group over over X. Uh, and uh, again, there is a technical detail. It, it is only a group up to homotopy because you can con because the composition of the loops are uh, is only associative up to homotopy, and it has an inverse in the uh, up to homotopy. It has a unit up to homotopy, so that means we need to pass to the homotopy category. Not uh, we we are not in the category of topological spaces. We are in the homotopy category. Okay, so similarly. In the world of algebraic geometry, this derived fiber product is also a group. And we want to write down the group axiom. So let's recall what is uh, what are the group axioms. So for a group, that means you need to have a multiplication map, a inverse map, and a unit map. Unit is from a point to the group element, unit. Such that uh, you need to have you need to have some uh, group axioms, such that the associativity can be rephrased as a commutative algebra. This is the associativity of the group law, of the multiplication. So m times identity. This is identity times multiplication. This is the multiplication map. Right. So in this case, what are the group axioms? Well. Oh, well, since everything is over X, so we need to take the tensor uh, fiber product over X. And of course they are derived. So this is the, this is G cross G to G. Okay. And uh, we can, well, well, we can cancel the X uh, here. You have x on, on the top and on the bottom. We can cancel that. So this is just the, the map from a triple intersection to a so x cross x cross x to x cross x. And so you can guess that the multiplication map in this case is just the projection onto the first factor times the projection onto the second factor. And what is the unit map? Well, you can change the two factors. So x comma y goes to a y comma x. This is the unit uh, inverse map and the unit map. So since everything, since the group, since in this case it is a group over X, so the unit is a map from X to the group. It's the diagonal. And uh, actually in this case, the most important thing is, yeah, yeah, this is the point. Uh, generally speaking, you get a group void, but it is very special that in this case, uh, in this case, uh, you can it becomes a group because because you can use the two projections, just like the just like the what what have just like the pictures from the previous uh, slide slide. Uh, in this case, since you it is very special that you have two projections so that you can make the group void into a group. I think this is explained in Arinke and Cadavaro's paper. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, another thing is that we need to pass to the derived category. So uh, the derived category, so the direct, so the, so in the previous page, we need to pass to the homotopy category and in the algebraic geometry case, Homotopy category means derived category. And this is a theorem about Kaparanov. The, the Lie algebra of the group is the shifted tangent bundle. And the, the Lie bracket is the RTR class. So just record, uh, remind you that uh, RTR class, RTR class, usually, usually people think about it, the RTR class in this way. Uh, let's see. So usually that people think about the RTR class in this way, but, but uh, you can take the dual 
and the x, the y is a morphism in the derived category. So in this picture, we have a group and we have a Lie algebra. The cohomology, the Lie algebra cohomology is the shift cohomology. Because actually, in this case, the Lie algebra, Lie algebra cohomology is the uh, derived home from uh, the trivial rep representation to Blanc. And uh, the shift cohomology is also the derived home from the trivial representation to Blanc. OX plays the role of the trivial representation. And the PBW in the Lie algebra case means HPR. So HPR, we, we can rephrase the HPR as morphism. It's, 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 it's the exponential map from the Lie algebra to the, to the Lie group. And uh, we can think about since everything, since in this case, everything is R phi over X. So we can think about the structure shift. We can think about the, uh, the isomorphism in terms of structure shift. So in terms of structure shift, it is this. The right-hand side is the structure shift of the Lie algebra and the left-hand side is the structure shift of the, of the, uh, of the group. Then we take the cohomology, we get the we get the UU HKR as morphism. Yeah, and in this picture, symmetric algebra is just the symmetric algebra. Universal enveloping algebra is, is given by is given by this. It's a hard theorem, not very easy to see to see this. Then PBW is HKR. So you see that uh, now you have a dictionary between the Lie algebra world and the algebraic geometry world. You can translate the things from one side to the other side. So, so now you can go back to the to the theorem of Duflo and uh, Kosevich. Kosevich's theorem and uh, Duflo's theorem they they can just be translated to each other in this dictionary. Okay. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so there are two natural ways to generalize the HPR as morphism. One is to generalize it to OB force. The other way is to generalize it to arbitrary closely embedding. As we see that uh, previously the HPR as morphism is related to the diagonal embedding. So in order to you in order to generalize the HKR as morphism to OB force, we need to generalize the HKR as morphism to an arbitrary embedding first. We need to use this result. So now we replace the diagonal embedding by an arbitrary closed embedding. And we need to assume first order splitting. First order splitting just means that the split uh, the inclusion to first order neighborhood splits. X, Y is the first order neighborhood in, of X in S. And uh, this is shown in EGA that uh, uh, the first order splitting is equivalent to the splitting of the short, of the further in short exact sequence. So, so these two are equivalent. And what are the groups and the uh, Lie algebra in this case is the derived fiber product and the, the shifted normal bundle. In the diagonal case, the shifted normal bundle is isomorphic to the shifted tangent bundle. And uh, there is a remark. Uh, yes, so in this case, actually, you only get a group void and a group void and the Lie algebra. It's not, a, you will not get a group and the Lie algebra in general. But but uh, but in this talk, for simple, for simplicity reason, we pretend that these things are groupoid and uh, oh, groups and the algebras and the algebras. Okay, so this is a theorem by Arinke and Kadar. So, uh, 
for uh, arbitrary close, the embedding with the first order splitting, you get a HKRS morphism. It's the same that you have the self intersection on the one side, and on the other side, you have the shifted normal bundle. And uh, uh, the other remark is that the HKRS morphism may depend on the first order splitting you choose. You, you see that in the theorem, you need to fix the uh, first order splitting. And uh, recently, I just uh, discovered, I just provided the sufficient and necessary condition for when the two uh, HKRS morphism are equal. So from two first order splitting, you can obtain two different two HKRS morphisms. And I can provide a sufficient and necessary condition for when the two HKRS morphisms are equal to each other. And uh, as I said, th so these things are naturally group points and uh, the algebra is not uh, groups and the algebra. And uh, the so in this setting, if you want to think about it, think about it in terms of uh, group points and the algebra is the it, it, it is anyway. Let's let's not talk about the technical details. So in this talk, let's uh, pretend that they are groups and uh, algebras, just for simplicity reasons. The group and the algebra structure also depend on the splitting you choose. So the first thing that. Uh, we could ask is the functoriality of the HKRS morphism. So let let me go to the theorem. So if you have a sequence of closed embeddings x in y, y in s, then you have three different self intersections f x cross x in y, x cross x in s, and y cross y in s. Uh, and you have uh, three shifted normal bundles. There are natural maps between the schemes and the natural maps between the vector bundles. Then you can ask if this diagram is commutative. You can put HQR on the vertical arrows. This is the functoriality problem. So. And this functoriality is important later if we want to study the if we want to study the uh, whole sort of cohomology for all before. Okay, so let's go back to the assumption. So let's say what we have in this case. If we have a sequence of closed embeddings, then the first thing we notice that it, it, we notice is that we have a show the exact sequence of normal bundles. And of course you can shift you can shift the show the exact sequence by negative one. So the first thing that I notice is that uh, let's call this H, this G, this to be N. The first thing that I notice is that the inclusion from H to G is a Lie algebra map. So this is a Lie algebra for morphism. However, the quotient map, this may not be a Lie algebra map. Well, the reason is very simple. The, the, H, uh, the H is only a sub algebra in G. It may not be an ideal in G. So it is an ideal in G if and only if the quotient map is a Lie algebra map, right? So the first thing that I noticed is that H is a, is an ideal in G if and only if this map is a Lie algebra homomorphism. And this is also equivalent to say that uh, the natural action of H on N is zero. So you, uh, you, you can define a natural action, natural action of H on N. Well, because, because this short exact sequence is actually a sequence of H modules. 
and h is an ideal in g is equivalent to say that this map is zero. This natural action is zero. Right. So this is the first thing that I noticed. Before we talk about the functional reality. Okay, so yeah, so the first map preserves the liberated, but the second map does not in general. And the second map preserves the Lie bracket when a cohomology class vanishes. And what is the cohomology class? Well, well, the cohomology class is a map in a derived category. And uh, this is exactly H in the previous notation. This is exactly N, this is N. So this cohomology class is nothing but the natural uh, action of H on N. And it has something to do with the bus brillant conjecture. So that's why I call it bus brillant class, but limited by a time. Level. So maybe let me skip that. Okay, so then we can uh, state the theorem of the functor reality. So in this case, you have uh, three schemes. Uh, you have a sequence of closed embeddings. And if you look at the left hand side, this map is naturally a Lie algebra map. So this diagram commutes naturally. And uh, here, if you look at the square on the right, the the map of uh, bundles, the map on, of bundles on the bottom is may not be a map of Lie algebras in general. So if, if it is not a Lie algebra map, then we don't expect that there is a functoriality of the exponential map, right? The HKR is considered as the exponential map from the Lie algebra to the group. Uh, so when, so in the case when the, but when the cohomology class vanishes, then the on the right hand side the tangent uh, the vector bundle map is a map of Lie algebra. Then the diagram is also commutative. So this is the result. And of course the HKR isomorphism in this case depend on the splitting you choose. So we need to assume some compatibilities on the splitting, uh, on the first order splitting. Compatibility means the diagram commute. So the composition of the two splitting is the, the last one. Okay. Okay, this has been explained. Uh, and the, the main motivation uh, that we have in mind is in the case when S is a smooth scheme and there is a finite group acting on S. So you can take the X and the Y to be the fixed uh, locus. And in this case, uh, the inclusion splits to first order naturally because you can look at the tangent, uh, the map of the tangent uh, bundles. Uh, yeah. So if I call the tangent bundle by V, so the short exact sequence is just this. T, uh, tangent bundle of, of X is the fixed locus. And there is a natural, splitting map. So for a vector V, you can map it to the average. So G times V and take the sum over all of the G. Then divided by the order of the group. This is this 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 map splits the short exact sequence network. And you can check that all the splittings are compatible in this case. Okay. Okay, so now we can move on to the orbit for the case. Um, so we assume that uh, X is a smooth scheme and that there is a finite group acting on X. We want to study the whole field cohomology of the quotient stack. And the orbit for this is considered as a stack, not the naive quotient. Okay, so the orbit for whole field cohomology by definition is defined as the same thing. So it's the X algebra from 
delta push forward O to delta push forward O, and delta against the diagonal embedding. And uh, in I want to mention that in this case, the story becomes much more complicated because of the following, following reason, because of the line stated here. So to study the to study the whole show the cohomology, we need to study the self-intersection x cross x over x cross x. Uh, we, uh, so let's look at the case before we derive it. So it, we just look at the underived case. So for a, many, for a smooth scheme, this is just the x, right? The x intersect with x, you just get x. But in the or before the case, this is no longer x anymore. So this makes uh, the story much more difficult. Uh, and the ix is called the inertia stack. In this case, it's the disjoint union of all the fixed locus. So for each element g in the group g, you can compute the fixed locus. And then you take the disjoint union of all of them and the quotient out by g. This is the inertia stack. This is the underived fiber product in this case, in the OB4 case. Okay. So to study the, uh, uh, so similar to the previous picture, to study the whole to the cohomology is enough to study the derived fiber product. So we just do, we just compute everything but a derived put an R. Then you can expect that the result is much more complicated. So this is a theorem of our ranking, uh, Cardaro and uh, Habelichek. In the orbit for the case, the whole show the cohomology is can be written explicitly explicitly in terms of this, and this is called the orbit for version of HKR as So, uh, xg is the fixed locus. Uh, CG is the core dimension. Uh, omega G is the dualizing shift. So generally speaking, if you have a morphism of schemes, you can talk about the general uh, dualizing complex. So omega G is the dualizing complex. Uh, in this case, it is a shift. Okay, so this is the obvious for the how should the cohomology explicitly, and then we can ask how can we generalize the theorem of Kalsevich and the uh, Kalak Vandenberg to obvious. So recall that the theorem says that uh, in the smooth scheme case you have uh, isomorphism of algebra. Uh, and the isomorphism is HQR plus some uh, correction term. So, so how we generalize the theorem to obvious? The first question is that, what is the correct product structure on this, on this polyvector field? So this is called the polyvector obvious polyvector field. In this case, there is no even a uh, natural product structure on this vector space. And that should generalize the wedge product. Okay, so this is a theorem. If we further assume, assume that uh, the group action is abelian, then we can define a product. And when G is trivial, it recovers the wedge product. And actually in some of the examples, uh, such as symmetric group acting on uh, acting uh, in, in some examples we know uh, even if the group is not abelian the product can be defined and the functoriality is related to the HKR uh, uh, the functoriality is related to the so associativity so we can only get associativity when uh, when a certain cohomology class vanishes. In general, we don't know if the product is associative or not. And some expert 
I recommend me to think about the E2 algebra, something like that. So maybe the product is not associative. Uh, and uh, the example step I can compute is the FEMA hypersurface. In this case, the product is associative. So in PN, the coordinates are x, uh, zero to x n, and you can define the you can define the FEMA hypersurface of degree d, and there is a natural z mod d action to the minus one action on on x. So in this case, the product is associative. This is the example that I can compute. And uh, I also I need I want to explain where the product structure comes from. So let's go back to the Lie algebra setting. So where where does the product on on this on this polyvector field comes from? So recall that in the Lie algebra case, uh, S G S G plays the role of the polyvector field, and uh, U G plays the role of the cold cold cohomology. So S G actually is the distribution on the Lie algebra supported at the zero element, and the U G is the set of distributions on the Lie group supported at the identity element. And uh, the map PBW is nothing but the exponential, the induced map of exponential. So you have an exponential map from G to uh, the Lie algebra to the Lie group. Then you can pull back functions. Uh, it's, uh, so the functions can be pulled back and uh, the distribution is the due of the function. So you, you can be pushed forward. And the there is a natural product on the distribution. It is the con convolution product. And then it is uniquely determined by the group multiplication. So let's say, so let's say what is the Multiplication. What is the multiplication on the distributions uh, supported the, on, on the distribution on the distributions of G, the group G? It's very simple. Well, so this corresponds to the product on whole field cohomology. Well, so first you take the distribution. On G tensor, the distribution on G it goes to the it goes to the uh, uh, it goes to the product G cross G. Then there is a multiplication map G cross G to G. This is the multiplication. Then you can take the induced map on the the induced map on the distributions. So this is the product on uh, whole field cohomology. And what is the product on, on the polyvector field? Well, you need to go to the Lie algebra. So, let, so denote LG by, by the Lie algebra because I want to use the same notation as the derived case. So L means linearization of the space. L is the Lie algebra. Then what is the convolution product on the distributions on the Lie algebra, this corresponds to the product uh, that we want to define in the OB for the polyvector field case. So let's see what is the natural product point. First, it is, first the step is the same. If you have a tensor, you can go to the uh, product LG cross LG. And in the middle, you have an isomorphism. This is trivial in the Lie algebra setting. It says that the tangent space of G cross the tangent space of G is isomorphic to the tangent space of G cross G. This uh, isomorphism is trivial in the Lie algebra case. Then after this identification, well, you we go to here. Then we can take the derivative of the of the multiplication. Well, the the multiplication is from G cross G to G, and you can take the derivative of this map. Take the derivative of this map is L, L M. 
And uh, under this identification, this map is nothing but the plus. It's just the, the plus. The addition, uh, the addition law of, uh, on the vector space is the plus on the vector space. So the, the, the addition law is the group law on the vector space, right? Okay, so that means uh, if you have a tensor, you go to the uh, product first, then take the induced map of the addition law. So yeah, so so the addition law is a map from G cross G to G. Then you take the induced map on the on the distributions. You get to the product, and the product is if determined by the group law on the vector space. Okay. And in the scheme and the orbifold case, uh, everything is also defined. So first, you can define the distribution. The distribution actually is easy to define. It's, it's just the dual of functions. And in this case, since everything is over x, over x, so we need to take the relative dual with respect to x. And and L x is also defined. So so if you have a group, if you have any scheme, uh, any stack, let's say. If you have any stack x, you can define the linearization, which is a vector bundle. The, 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 uh, which is a vector bundle. And what I want to explain is that uh, the isomorphism is non-trivial. The isomorphism here is non-trivial for all people because the inertia stack is not equal to the stack in this case. Well, let's see. So in this case, G is the, the free loop space is X cross X over X cross X derived. And we want to take the linearization of G. So this is a vector bundle, but it's not a vector bundle over X, it's a vector bundle over the inertia stack in this case. So now you look at the non-trivial isomorphism on the, on the uh, left hand on the left hand side, you have a vector bundle over the inertia stack, cross a vector bundle over the inertia stack, but the uh, product is taken over x. So that means you have two vector bundles over the inertia stack. Then you need to push forward it onto x, then take the derived fiber product again. So it's not clear that this thing is a vector bundle again. You see the right hand side is always a vector bundle. It's just the L something, it's always a vector bundle. So this isomorphism in, in the in the orbifold case is non-trivial. Just because the inertia stack is not uh, X anymore. So so in, even in the even in the smooth scheme case, uh, the isomorphism is trivial because the inertia stack is isomorphic to uh, it's just the X. So if you have two vector bundles over X and you take the product is again a vector bundle, that's clear. But now in this case, you need to push forward the vector bundle on, from the inertia stack to the to, to X, then take the derived fiber product. So you get a complicated thing. Okay. Okay, so this is the this is how I de how we define the product structure on on the on the poly vector field on the orbit for the poly vector field. Okay, so there are some questions remaining. So now since we have product structures on both sides, on the one one side is the whole OB for the whole the cohomology, the other side is the OB for the polyvector field. So how we can generalize the theorem of Kalsevich and the uh, Clark Vandenberg to the orbifold case. So how can we get an isomorphism of algebra in this case? And another thing is that we want to compare the product we define for a Calabi or orbifold with the orbifold singular cohomology of its mirror. Well, because in homological mirror symmetry, the Hold short, hold short co homology should 
is expected to match with the singular cohomology. Uh, and uh, to be more precisely, I should say the quantum cohomology. And uh, there, here is a, uh, there is an example that I can compute. So we can compute the FEMA uh, quantic case. Uh, so in this case, if X is a FEMA quantic, quantic, uh, and uh, G is the Z mod five to the third uh, action on X. Then I can compute the the product explicitly. So notice that uh, from the previous page, let, let me go back. So from the previous page, uh, page uh, well, uh, yeah. From the previous page, you can see that uh, there, uh, the there is a natural by degree on the there is a natural by, by degree on the OB for the poly vector field. And this pedigree needs to be modified. Uh, so, uh, so once you modify the pedigree, uh, ju just uh, do some shift, uh, the product uh, will preserve the pedigree. So I'm, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, there is something like, uh, like a whole decomposition in this case. So this polyvector field can be decomposed into the by degree pieces. And uh, if you define the by degree correctly and put the dimensions of the vector space into a diamond, it will look like this. So what I can show is that the product on the polyvector field on the on the orbit for the polyvector field is anti uh how to say this so 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 in the degrees in the middle degree piece you can consider the product as a pairing just like the uh single cohomology case you can think about the middle part as a intersection the product in the middle part as a intersection pairing so so in this part the product is non-degenerate and anti-symmetric. And for the vert vertical line, this is generated by one class alpha, alpha square, alpha cube. So, so, so this is the product structure that I can compute explicitly. And I have talked to some experts in symplectic geometry who knows the quantum cohomology, because in this case, this, Product structure on the on the OB for the polyvector field should match with the quantum cohomology of its mirror, and it turns out that the in this case the mirror is just X without the group action. It's just X. So I have asked some expert in this field about quantum cohomology, and there are some problems uh, which may not be solved, which may not be known, but. Uh, if uh, the problems are solved uh, in the expected way, then this two sets should match. So the, the product structure on the quantum cohomology should match with the, the product that I have computed. And they, the, the expert, they just can't give me a very clear answer what the quantum product products on this on, on this FEMA quantic is, but uh, they said that uh, they expect that the, the two sets should be the same. Uh, okay, this is one example. And another example I can compute is that uh, I want, we want to compute, we want to consider is the case of, uh, is the hyperkähler case. So in the hyperkähler case, the mirror of a hyperkähler all before is the, is the, is itself. So that means we can go directly from the obifold uh, polyvector field to the obifold singular cohomology. 
And also in this case, the quantum the quantum cohomology does not deform, which means the quantum cohomology is equal to the singular cohomology in this case. So if you look at the row on the top, this is the poly OB for the polyvector field. And it is expected to be isomorphic to the Obifold Hochschild cohomology as algebra. And the, the isomorphism here is due to mirror symmetry. So the right hand side is the Obifold version of the singular cohomology. Left hand side is Hochschild cohomology. Then there is a, there is a whole decomposition for the Obifold singular cohomology. You can decompose it like this. So it is expected that the product should match. You can go from the uh, top to the bottom. However, uh, since in this special case, uh, the manifold is hypercalor, so you don't need to go through this complicated identification. You can just go from the top to the bottom because, because of hypercalor. Uh, the tangent bundle is as morphic to the cotangent bundle. And the, the Dualizing complex in this case is trivial. So you see uh, that up to a, a shift in the degree, uh, ignore the, 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 the by degree, you can just go from the top to the bottom directly. So, so because the tangent bundle becomes the cotangent bundle and the dualizing complex, dualizing shift is trivial in this case. So a natural thing to do is that we can just uh, go directly from the top to the bottom and see if the product uh, matches or not. Uh, so, uh, and uh, actually it's not that easy to show it. this is unknown. We only know that the by degree matches. So, so, on, so on both sides, they have, they have a multiplicative by degree. They have a by degree, which is pro, uh, preserved by the corresponding product structure. So now what we know is that the by, by degree matches. Okay, so I, I think that's all for my talk today. Oh, thank you.